They smell so good. You know, this is um, Spa Monday. And I've been doing it for a while. I guess so this will be my um, fourth one, I believe. So I'm back. So basically the last two Mondays I had um, some important stuff to do. So unfortunately I can do this by Monday. But I'm back. Mm. And um, the tradition is to review a book. More so like a self-help book. I want to stay in that genre. Um, and then do the bubble bath and then of course come back in the kitchen and cook a nice breakfast so today we're having fresh toast mm, it smells so good and hopefully everybody enjoyed Easter weekend mm. and as usual I typically give a rose for me to you. My name is Mickey Williams and I'm coming from beautiful Atlanta and I'm a vlogger. We're gonna pick up where we left off, uh, left off as, and that was reviewing um, Tyler Perry's book. Mm, it just smells so good. So of course, Medea's uninhibited commentaries on love and life. This will be the third review. So basically, I have been reading the book um, 20 minutes once a week or so. But well, anyway, let's begin. Okay, so this is the book. But there's uninhibited commentaries on love and life. Don't make a black woman take off her earrings by the great Tom Perry. Now, this is the third review. I have, when I do spas, um, I didn't want to necessarily just get in the tub. I want it to be a process. So I wanted to have a discussion, you know, it may not necessarily be a book, it can be just a healthy topic. Um, I want to keep the frequency up, so I won't necessarily talk about anything that's going to require too much critical thinking or strategy, just uplifting, you know. This is about resting, more on a therapeutic side, you know, just relaxation, chilling good giving some golden nuggets out of a book um that's just that and then go take a bubble bath now some ladies gentlemen and of course judy's may decide they want to do a pedicure and that's your right some may decide to just go eat a muffin outside you know near a tree or just sit on the porch um, I just wanted to start out Mondays and tranquil and peace to get you ready for the work week. Now I get it, some of you all may say, um, I have to be to work on Monday morning. I totally get it, I totally understand. But I wanted to break the rules a little bit. Now I'm not saying, I'm definitely not saying, call into your place of employment. 
No. Okay. I'm not recommending for anybody to call into their place of employment and say, well, I'm staying home and do a boat fail. <laughs> no, 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 no. That is not what I am promoting or motivating or asking for you to do. I'm just asking you to get up a little earlier on Monday morning because spas have been considered um, a luxury. A luxury. How can a spa be just a luxury? Um, exclusivity, I get it. I understand. But why not the working mother? Why not the working mother or the working father or the student in college or um, just an older person who's part of the aging community or someone who just wants to rest or relax and I feel we don't take advantage of the things that we currently have access to um, and I just felt like Monday mornings I, I keep saying this Sunday fun day like people use Sunday to relax or they may decide to do something fun which is fine but why not why not on a Monday why not Monday morning you get up an hour 30 40 minutes early you get up um, 30 40 minutes or an hour early to decide to do self-care and to love on you and I noticed during COVID um, everybody was practicing just about everybody was practicing self-care and it has like almost stopped why is that why is it that we have to get to a point where something negative occurs and then we begin to identify with it or we begin to um, challenge it we begin to try to make it better we, we begin to um, take you know take those negative moments and then we pay attention but why does it have why it has to get to a point where it's bad you know what I mean so I feel like self-care now is secondary for a lot of us and we're not taking it serious and self-care is not exclusive to just a spa or a bath it's your mental health um make sure you're checking in with yourself um and if you feel you need some help seek it don't be afraid i'm a social worker a lot of people forget that i am a social worker they think that i'm just an entrepreneur uh, no no ma'am no sir i am actually a social worker and that's really my first love my first love is social work but my first love truly is social work and i've said it time and time again that my um life assignment is to become a philanthropist and that's another conversation we're doing spotting and eventually what i want to do is i want to take this spa to a whole nother level just a whole nother level um but back to monday i want men and women of course judy's to take it serious you know what i mean get just get up early and don't look at monday as a a, a thing where it's exhausting or some of you may say I don't want to go to my job some of you may say oh I gotta do this today you know because it's like you have two days of break some of us do I'm an entrepreneur so I work seven days a week just about um, but you may have Saturday and Sunday off and it's like you cram everything into two days psychologically over time just think how that does to someone you know what I mean just think you cram so much how it limits your life and I've been going through this thing the last couple of years looking and assessing my life like how is it that I'm restricted to what I want to do now I don't want to do anything bad but the things that I would like to do you know what I mean I would like to get up uh, on Wednesday and go for a walk if i wanted to do soul cycle or pilates um if i wanted to just meditate but i have that schedule how did i even get there <laughs> you know how did i get myself to a point i don't want to be a part of the rat race 
such a negative term. And I know you have to set your systems up to be productive, but something has to give. And so I said, I'm gonna start with Monday then. I'm gonna start, I'm gonna challenge the, the worst day of them all because they have comp day for Wednesday. So I said, Monday, I'm gonna choose Monday. You know, I don't, it don't, doesn't matter if one person listens to me, it doesn't matter. It's about me, it's about me um, positioning myself. And if I'm hurt, many blessings. You know, and if I'm not, it, it just, it's just delayed. That's, that song is not denied. <laughs> but I just feel we need to just take better care of ourselves. And you do not have to wait to get money to go to a spa. You can begin in your bathroom. And you can go in there and do the decor, do the candles, or whatever you feel. Just give yourself some time. You owe that to yourself. You deserve it. And don't allow dreams and life stressors, um, relationships, uh, finances keep you stuck where you don't even have the, com the mental capacity to be able to have that strength to move forward. And a lot of times life stressors can suppress us where we don't even have the critical thinking, the strength, the stamina to move forward. And that's why I said I want us to begin on Monday morning and then uh, eventually you can do it a couple of days a week, whatever your heart so desires. So um, that's why I'm doing this. I kind of want to check back in with that because I didn't want you all to think, what is she doing? <laughs> what, <laughs> what is, what is Makiba doing? So this is what Spa Monday is about. And I got to tell you, I, I have a big vision for my Mondays. Yes, I do. I plan on taking this. I plan on going to spas and I'm not going to say everything. First thing I want to discuss and I'm picking back up where I left off at. It was about cheating on your spouse. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna challenge top top period. I'm gonna say, and this and by the way, you all need to understand, this is coming from Medea, right? We understand Tyler Perry is the content creator, but this is her voice. So when Medea says um, cheating on your spouse, I want to call it creativity with your spouse, right? Okay. So Medea gave now I need to also share this with you all. I don't want to give the entire book. I, you know, I, I just don't professionally, ethically and legally, I don't think that's right. You know, you can give golden nuggets. You can, it's like, to me, I consider that plagiarism. Yeah, I don't know if it's because I've been to college, you know, been to grad school, wrote a thesis, and I don't know how many papers. So I'm, I'm gonna have a different perspective. And then I'm one of the ones who would like to say purchase the book, um, but I will share what my thoughts are. So on this particular page, on 50, the title is the title is cheating on your spouse. I would rather say to Medea, creating with your spouse. We're in a time that um, men and women. I will. I don't want to necessarily say women. Um, there is no romance. <laughs> There is no creativity. Um, there's just none. And let me explain before you all counsel me and talk about me in the comments. Oh, men are. And I'm not talking about buying a purse. I'm, I'm not talking about buying purses, jewelry. I'm saying just being really tapping in into your significant other, really knowing what he or she desires. And I'm not talking about again, let me, now there are surprises and some men absolutely adore and love spoiling their significant other, okay? We're not going to dismiss them. They definitely can stay in the room because we don't see it often. And it's, it's typically gonna be someone of an influential or someone of power. You know, you don't, it is what it is, okay? But I'm talking about working class people. I'm talking about, you know, and then the Cinderella stories, how often do they happen, okay? We don't even really hear that anymore. We don't hear uh, this particular man just really went in there and, and just rescued the woman. 
you don't hear that either. But I want to address the, the the men and women who work, entrepreneurs. You know what I mean? You know, it doesn't matter. I feel we're lacking, and I'm gonna say we, so then that way, we don't. I'm not coming off as though I am um, being a little mean spirited towards the men. I feel there is lack of creativity. Okay. Lack of creativity, lack of creativity. Do you really know your significant other? Do you really know your significant other? Or is that it's a trend thing? You at your a man is at the barbershop and he here. Oh, it's Valentine's Day. It's Christmas. It's her birthday. That's when you go out. You know, you do that. But it's that everyday um, engagement that every day tapping into your significant other it's not it, it, um, she's graduating it's not it's her birthday no because I feel that's the limited I, I feel actually it's an insult and why I say that is because it's like why you gotta wait till my birthday to give me some roses why you have to wait on my birthday to give me some, and I don't even really do chocolate so I'm speaking for the women why you gotta wait on my birthday to buy me a purse you know why it has to be and that's what I'm saying how we've been programmed to think a certain way what happened to thinking out of the box and becoming creative and becoming original and and thinking you know what it's nothing wrong with um I see my girl purse <laughs> You know, you know, you know, she didn't carry that purse for a while. I'm not going to wait five, six months to buy her a purse. Let me just go on and give a girl a purse and make, and, and this, this is where the creativity come in at, ladies and gentlemen. This is where the, the, the creativity come in at. I see her purse is a little off. I'm going to sit on the goose chase. I'm going to go buy her purse to keep it there. And come up with something to leave her there without me and have and just to have it wrapped. That's to me is showing individuality, is showing um you love and care about that person and you're concerned because you're like, I'm not feeling her purse. Now we're not talking about, you know, she has a four thousand dollar purse, eight thousand. We're not talking about that. Let's remove that right now. However, we want those men to stay in the room because we don't get to see it all the time. So we still want to think higher. We still want to think there's possibility and there's opportunity, there's growth, there's advancement. So don't take them out the room. Let's keep them in the room with this conversation. But we're talking about the brother, right? And if he can't afford it, I have a good secret for you. Have you ever been a good week? <laughs> it works. You know, if if a brother say, if he say to himself, um, I can't afford to get her a thousand dollar bag or two thousand dollar bag, a couple of hundreds, Goodwill, I gotta tell you, they do have treasure. You you gotta find it in your heart to say, my significant other loves me. She loves me, so I'm gonna go to Goodwill and I'm gonna find her something. Now, if she don't accept it, shame on her. Shame on her. Shame on her. Because she understands your income. However, it's the thought that counts. And what happened to going to the dollar store, right? Go to the dollar store, get a bag, and then you don't have to buy 12 roses, even if you go buy three. What the point that I'm trying to say is we lack creativity. We don't understand what it's like to really dive deep. And I'm not talking about deep in love. First, it starts with creativity because if you are in tune with the person and you're really listening to them, just really carefully listening to them, you know what their strengths and weaknesses are over time. You know what their desires are over time because they begin to work and tap into it all the time. It's just like a, it's just like a, a woman saying she wants to um, go on a cruise. You, she might talk about water all the time. She might say, I want to go try on a bathing suit. So those are hidden hints. <laughs> you know what I mean? Or she may be open and say, I want to go on a cruise. Um, and, you know, let me go get a bathing suit. You know, you go to Walmart. All I'm saying is, it's not all about the money sometimes. It's about the creativity. 
it is so beautiful to have somebody to that care love you where they can look at you and be able to see the lack and there and they are in the position to fulfill those areas but not in overwhelm we're not doing overwhelm and not in a place where they know they're not capable but there are opportunities creativity people creativity we miss that and I think it's an insult and some women will be mad at me and I'm standing on my ground I'm you know I don't do a whole lot of this I don't do that but it's an insult for a man to love a woman and to wait for Valentine's Day to buy some roses it's an insult for him to it's just an insult and it's also an insult to say let's wait to go to the movies on the weekend be spontaneous you know let's wait to do a date on Saturday I you know what I'm starting to look at my Saturdays like it don't exist I don't know I know <laughs> why we can't do something on a Thursday for lunch why we can't do something for lunch on a Tuesday why we can't do something on a Monday evening at five after work I'm just giving you what how life can have you programmed over the years where you psychologically begin to tell yourself it's impossible no i rebuke that it's possible don't accept you have to do stuff just on saturday and sunday if you think about it they even have church on wednesday night huh at least they stretch it all i'm saying is don't allow yourself to um to feel you have to be like that you know, as long as it's an integrity and values and you're not stretching yourself to a way where it's hurting you, but you're stretching for growth, creativity and opportunity. Let's do that, right? So when it comes to Medea saying cheating on your spouse, right? We're going to say creating with your spouse. And she gave some good ones. I'm going to give you one of the funny ones. She said, um... It says, here is how I kept one of my marriages spicy. My husband and I used to play this game called pimp up, hoes down, where I was the hoe and he was the pimp. We met out on the corner. I, I'd have my hoe clothes on. We almost got arrested one time. He'd come in his old Cadillac and pick me up. I wouldn't get in the car for less than $30. Um, Medea. <laughs> 30, you mean 100. <laughs> Honey, you talking about 30, um, at least 100. I don't know how the pimp whole thing work, but if I'm meet you on the corner now, I got, I'm thinking, well, if I'm meet you on the corner, I want to go get me something good to eat. Y'all don't pay me no attention. So I'm going to want at least $100 because I know I'm going to want to get me a nice meal. Then I'm going to want to get me a dessert. I, I, I drink, but I don't drink, drink. So then I'm gonna wanna probably drive somewhere and go get something like a nice little ice cream or donut or something. I know I'm being extra, but a hundred, my dear, a hundred. Um, he'll come in his old Cadillac and pick me up. I wouldn't get in the car for less than thirty dollars, even if it's, even if it's your husband. Don't get into the car for less than thirty. At least she's given that advice. You don't want to be a cheap hoe. <laughs> Okay, I get it. So he'll pay the money and we'll go to the motel and have a good time. We did that for about six months, but then I don't want to continue on talking too much, but then she cut it off because she said he got just extra too much if she, she cut it off. Okay, so this is how I feel. That was content creation at its finest. It was just comical, you all. The thing about it, how I feel, when it comes to being creative, an, a, another good one for me would be you know how you, when you first start dating someone and it's all about moving, dinner, and conversation on the phone. But then it elevates to going to each other's home and it just elevate and elevate. What happened to, it's a good one, because uh, I've always had this in my mind. Would you like to go to Jamaica? He or she says yes, but then y'all plan it, but y'all plan to meet there. That's like a date 
but it's more of it's it's a little bit more intimate because you're actually going out of town so instead of saying let's go to the palm or the same regions and have tea or you know why not would you like to go to jamaica would you like to go to um maldives or i'm just naming random places people love to go would you like to go and, and instead of saying yes and you put it together like you travel together you all actually plan to stay at different hotels you have different flights this is creativity this is really and it's like you're traveling by yourself but you're gonna meet this individual right i want you to think how significant this is you meet the individual at the hotel at the restaurant and then you date like that y'all don't y'all are not in the same room what happened to creativity and you know what while you're doing this process you get to learn yourself you get to learn when you're traveling by yourself i know we're all adults but i'm just saying you you learn some things about yourself because it's excitement it's intensity you're like oh my goodness i'm going all the way to jamaica to have this date with this man or i'm going all the way to jamaica to have this date with this woman that's what i'm saying creativity but life have positioned us and restricted us to think one way the negativity kick in, the self-talk kick in, and it sounds like this. I'm not going to Jamaica to meet him. I'm not going to Jamaica to meet her. I'm not spending my money. Have you thought about you've been saying you want to travel? Have you thought about you've been saying you want to have some R&R &R time, some me time? I don't get it, people. If you're saying you want to do these things, sometimes it may not come in the form that you think. What is wrong with doing that? And it may not happen that weekend, but you can plan to do it. I think it's just beautiful. That's one of my creative ways of dating your spouse and or significant other. Um, my second one which will require a lot of activity and that's doing something outside. We as black women and men, the culture, we tend to do everything on the inside. Going outside will teach you um, how this individual is physically. Mm, yes, it's a good one. So you may want to go horseback riding. You may want to go swimming. You may want to go hiking. It'll position him or her to see where they are. And you all can begin to work on that if it is some like some limitations there. I think that's another one. So, you know, when it because this is basically he's talking about spouse. I mean, she's talking about spouses. But now in, in days, you got to start with the dating. It's like, think about it. So I call it creating with your spouse. That needs to be an affirmation for everybody's home who is married and definitely for women who are considering or have been praying about getting married. Praying that your significant other is creative and not just for holidays. I purchase flowers all the time. All, that's something that I love to do. I love to purchase flowers. A man will have to think to himself. You know what I mean? Not when do you purchase flowers because I purchase them all the time. Have you thought about it? This would be one of those things. Just to, I, this is just an example. T taking a little hour class to learn how to do an arrangement. I'm just, you know, it's about that creativity, but you have to be attracted and like that person. I'm not saying when you out here just dating random people and you're trying to fit in. No, <laughs> but if you're getting serious, ladies, even with the men, you know, I know I understand it's sports. They love sports. Figure out ways where you can become creative. You know what I mean? And a lot of it doesn't necessarily have to be about money. Okay, the next thing I want to discuss when it comes to me is uninhibited commentary. So I love and life. Don't make a black woman take her earrings off by the great time of period. It's, um, the second thing I want to address is on page 55. I believe, and it was about, um, she talked about intuition. We have to have intuition today. Some people call it spirit of discernment. Some people call it tapping in into the, the earth. There's so many different, so many different ways to identify it. But Medea asks, am I a paranoid person? And the second one was, am I a person that's just crazy? 
And the title is about trust your intuition because she goes into um, how your intuition, how people just don't use it. And again, I told you I don't want to go from page to page in the book. And how I feel about the intuition. Now, as a social worker, I think I would be doing a disservice if I don't address this part. Am I a paranoid person? Am I a person that is just crazy? If you did answer yes, sorry about that, my assistant had calls me and it threw me off. The title for this particular section is Trust Your Intuition. And as I was saying, intuition, some would identify it as spirit of discernment. Some would say it's happening to the earth. There are just so many ways to identify it. But how I feel if me being a social worker, I would be doing a disservice if I do not address this. If you did answer yes. Um, and I don't want you to take this wrong because it's not bad. To, first, I'm going to use it. I'm just, I'm just going to say seek help. Help comes in different ways. It comes in different ways. It comes in the form of calling a friend. It comes in the form of talking to a family member your significant other or spouse um, and when I say friend I'm talking about somebody who you trust right and if the trust is not there then you go to the next level and that would be um, a family member if you don't feel comfortable talk to a family member the next one would be um, your significant other if you don't have a significant other then you Try to find someone or seek someone within your heart that you feel you can trust. And if that doesn't, <laughs> if that's not there, then you you just keep going into you. Even go to your church. You know what I mean? They have counseling. So don't look at it as judgment. Everybody has been judged. Everybody has been judged some way or the other. And it doesn't matter. It's about healing. It's all about healing, right? So if you did answer yes, please seek some help, okay? Because it's going to help you in so many other ways. But this particular um, section in the book is about your intuition. And, um, and she talked about some really good things. Um, and I'm going to read this little path, this little area. I'm going to read just a little small section. It says, so I would like to talk to the normal, regular people. Now you got to be honest with yourself. If you're going to do this test, if you're a normal, regular person who wakes up every day, you ain't got to take no pills to get up or take no pills to go to bed. If you feel something telling you, kicking you, hmm, something ain't right, then listen up. You're the person I'm talking to. You're the person who's sensitive to your intuition and I can teach you to be even more sensitive I can train you to really pay attention. Steal yourself. Get the kids out of the house. Let the man go to work and get into a silent place. You could even be cleaning up and still just be quiet and listen. Turn off everything in the house. No distractions. Some people are afraid of silence because of the things they might hear. If you turn everything off, including that chatter in your brain, your, intu your intuition will start to talk to you, especially if you're cleaning the house and going through your man's pockets. It will really show you something. For example, okay, so that is so true. And that kind of goes back to what I was talking about. How could you possibly, how could you possibly be tapped into your intuition when you're always just working you have like stresses going on, you're trying to meet deadlines, you're probably going through a period in your life where you're stressed. How could you possibly be tapped into your intuition? And if you do go through some things in life, it can skew on the negative end more so psychologically and cause damage, you know what I mean? And you're like, wow, I'm, I am my neighbors. <laughs> You're probably like, why am I depressed? Like, why today I'm depressed? It's because you're not taking time for self-care. You're not healing. You're not actually finding ways to put yourself in a position to change for the better. So intuition is significant. I totally agree with Madea on this. Tapping into your intuition. 
can extremely help you. Even um, just being out, you may, let me give you an example. You may drive up to a gas station and you may say, I'm not, feel, something don't feel right. You may, you may see a vehicle and it may just, it's like an energy. You may say, mm -mm, no ma'am. And you may have to get some gas. You may say, okay, what do I need to do? do? What I need to do? Do I need to sit in the car for a minute and wait? Wait till they get their gas and leave? This is just a mild example I'm just giving you. Just being tapped into your intu intuition because it's like, even if you're at the mall and you get ready to go to your car and you have a brand new Apple, okay. This is definitely a good one. You have a brand new Apple MacBook. Do you leave out of the Mac store, the Apple store with your MacBook, walk through the mall without security, walk to your car and it's like everybody can see you? Or do you ask Apple to contact security and they escort you? That's intuition. Wait a minute. Hmm, I don't think it would be wise. Now, some people like for people to know they purchased an Apple because it's $1,000. See my Apple. No, ma'am. No, honey. No, 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 no. No, no, not in, in today's time. This is not what this is about. Showboat time is over. <laughs> that is gone. You do not, I do not recommend for you to purchase an Apple MacBook or a desktop and walk through a mall to your vehicle. No, you're too enticing. Uh, no, no, no. You can ask for security and they would be more than happy to escort you to your vehicle. Or you may say, okay, some people in here see me purchase this one, two, three thousand dollar item. Maybe I need to just wait and come back in a couple of hours. You know what I mean? Be wise, you know, and sometimes you can't be wise. You have to let people know, tap into your intuition. You may say, you know, listen to your spirit, of, you know, listen to the spirit of discernment. What does your nerves say? You know what I mean? What does your, how does your gut feel? So I totally agree with Matilda on that in terms of tapping into your intuition. Okay, next. Medea went into childbirth and she has kids enough said. Now I keep coming across this thing about family. Kids and family, family and kids. Kids and family, family and kids. I read this section and it just, I just keep coming. This has something to do with me, okay? I don't have, I'm not married, I don't have any children. But it's like, Medea is basically saying how I would say the Asian community would feel towards having children. I grew up in a home, I'm, I'm going to talk about me briefly and then we're going to wrap this portion up. I grew up in a home, and I've said this before, my mother was strict. Now, she wasn't too strict where I couldn't have friends. I had plenty of, I had plenty of friends, okay? I had me some friends. Um, I was able to go out to functions, um, but my mother was still strict. She worked for the government. And I went to church, Sunday school. I taught Sunday school. Um, when I was little, I went to a Jewish school. My mother, she did not play. I had the kind of mother, she would look at you. And you knew it was over. Oh, it wasn't on. It, it wasn't on negotiation. My mother can look at you. It's a look. It's a look. Mothers know this, and fathers. She will look, and you knew. And then another thing. I was the youngest. The youngest out of four children. Okay, my mother had four children, and I was the youngest. So I want y'all to think. By the time I got of age, I knew what to do and what not to do. And see, a lot of people would say I didn't get whippings because my mother was tired. My mother was not tired. My mother, once upon a time, was a sheriff. My mother uh, saw with a lot of people. She saw, oh my goodness, she saw with a lot of different people. <laughs> um, she was always traveling. My mother had a cake business, praying baked cakes by Myra. She was a very active woman. The thing about it was, it's like I was just wise enough to look at my siblings and say, I'm not doing that. I'm not, I don't like the results of it. And I don't like the outcome. I was smart enough to ask my brother because my brother was closer because my sister was already gone to college. My, well, first of all, my older sister was already gone in the military. My second sister, second oldest sister was gone to college and it was my brother and I in the house. So I had past the tomboyish phase and now I'm like feeling myself being a young little teenager or whatever but 
Um, if I felt I want to do something, I would just ask my brother for confirmation or should I do that? <laughs> I just, and then I was just scared of my mom. And I think I just had a, I had a lot of love and respect for my mother. You know what I mean? I just didn't feel it was a, a good thing for me to just be doing stuff like sneaking boys in my house. No, you weren't going to come to my house. <laughs> You just not gonna come to my house. Like, why you gonna come to my house? I, 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 I didn't. I just didn't do that. I didn't do drugs um, when I was a teenager. And you have to remember, like I said, my mom worked for court. She worked for the court system. She was a sheriff once upon. She did all of that. Um, so I just didn't have an interest and a guy coming to my house when I was young. And then I had a brother and my brother had tons of friends. So that's another thing. They always was blocking, but that's another conversation. Um, then when I got older, I still was like wise. It's like some things I, I was able to just look. So let me give you an example. It's like being on a job and you up for a promotion and you start to assess that person's performance. You're like, okay, I'm not doing that. Mm -mm. Oh, I'm going to do that. You, you put yourself in a position to be better at it, not necessarily to equate yourself to who's better between you and that person, because you want to see that person win also. But you say to yourself, I want to do the position so it'll help the people. You know, when you're working for a company, you're supposed to be there for the vision, for the mission, right? The vision of the company and the mission. Yes, you missed that, that part right there. So it's like when you're, when you're looking at that coworker and you're like, I want that position. You don't want to down and say, I want to do it better than her. No, you want to say, how can I be more of an asset? Let's be positive about it. You know what I'm saying? Let's be positive. So when it comes to growing up, I didn't get a lot of whippings. <laughs> I didn't get a lot of punishments because number one, I was scared and I wasn't scared to go home. No, I wasn't scared to go to my mother's house. I just ain't try her. You know what I mean? My mama carry. Okay, I just was one of the ones who just figured it out. She got a whipping for this. My sibling got a whipping for this. My brother got a punishment for this. So obviously it does not work in my mother's house. So it wasn't, why well, I'm gonna try it. So I, I was able to leverage that knowledge with my mother. May she rest in peace and love you so much. Love my mommy. Um, I was able to know how to try her versus when not to try her. So I was able to get away with a little bit more because I knew how to approach her with things and I knew what not to do in her house. So I wasn't one of the girls be sneaking boys in. I didn't have a, like my sister, she's gonna get me for this. Her and my brother had a pool party but because they kept asking my mom, can we, can we have a pool party? And she was like, no. And um, they gave me this big bag of candy. I was like elementary school and they snuck and had a little pool party. All their little friends um, was over to the house with their bicycles and my mom called me one time. She was like, because uh, the neighbors called, I think. She was like, I hear music and I was like, you do? But anyway, of course I was very close to my mom. It's another, another day on this, but that's what I'm saying. Like, I saw what happened to them. <laughs> They're going to give me why would I have a pool party when I know the consequences of it? You know what I'm saying? So I just try to do right. I'm not saying I'm perfect. No, absolutely not. But what I am saying is when you see, when you see, it's called observation. How could it be an asset to your life versus a liability? But when I was younger, I was not using the terms um, asset versus liability. I was using the term, I'm not trying to get a whipping. And yes, I believe in whippings, but I believe in first, I believe in first getting to know your children, you know, know your child. Like my mother believed in coming in our room at any given time. She did not get, my mother did not have the mindset, that's your room and this is my house. So you knew she could come in that room anytime. You knew she could look in your book bag anytime. My mother would pop up at the school sometimes. She didn't wait for PTA meetings. That's what I'm saying. It was, it was no such thing as, PTA means what? My mom would just pop up and be like, oh my goodness, that's my mom. And so, um, you know, I agree with a lot of the things Medea said in terms of sparing the rod, you know, whooping your child. Now, not just you boop, be whoop your child, be whoop your child. Now, that's another conversation. I don't believe in that. I don't, I don't believe in harming a child. 
I don't believe in harming anybody, okay? But I do believe in sparing the rod. Um, and what else? Oh, that's my neighbor. I hear their baby. Um, and she talked about other things, staying in school and stuff like that. We're going to wrap this up. Um, we'll continue next week. I do Bubble Bath Mondays. So once we finish this book, we're gonna start on. We're gonna start another book. However, there're gonna be some times where I'm not gonna do spa days here. I'm gonna actually go to a spa. So that's gonna be exciting for all of us, and um, you'll get to see that experience. So now we're gonna take this to the bathroom so we can rest. And i in terms of. When I get in the tub, I've said this before time and time again, because eventually things will start to change, start to change and I don't want people to get confused. The first 20 minutes when I'm in the tub, I do um, just gratitude. You know, I'm asking God for forgiveness, anything that I've done. Um, just being in his presence, praying and just saying thank you for what I can, what I have or, you know, things like that. And then the second is when I read, um, I actually cut the, I cut the light on and read. And then the third is I go into visualization. I visualize how I want to be as a woman in the community, how I want to see my business, the brand, how I want to be towards my family, how I want just, just the being. <laughs> so that's what the visualization is. So now let's go get ready for the bubble bath. Mm. Okay, so we're going to start the bubble bath process. Um, first, I start out, well, actually, I start out already with prayer. I started early. Um, so we're going to start by saging. Um, that's the most I'm going to do in terms of earthy stuff. Um, and then I'm going to take it back to like just candles. And I've shared this before. When I burn my candles, they have to have a meaning. I don't burn candles just to burn candles, okay? I don't do that. So each candle have, has a messaging. And today I have a new one. Now I typically do things in three, but this candle is the fourth one. It's imperative when I do my bubble bath that I have one for business, one for health, and one for love, okay? So, um, but then I have another one I'm gonna show you all. So let's start by season. And I've said this before. If I'm sage wrong, let me know. I typically, I, this is I'm new to sage. I just think it's cute. Um, so just tell me if, if I'm doing it wrong. Because one time I actually lit the sage and it didn't do anything. I thought you're supposed to have like a, a substantial amount of smoke or whatever but anyway let's sage <laughs> then we'll sage okay and this is during the time that you all can pray you know what i mean
We're in a time where people talk about business, entrepreneurship, entrepreneurship, get in the bag, entrepreneurship. During this time, I feel it's essential that it's about relaxing, reflecting, praying. Um, you can do your affirmations, and you can do your affirmations. Um, but to me, the most I'm going to do in terms of business is burn a candle, and it says, girl, build your own empire, okay? So, I'm going to like this, and this is my hope for you. However, my hope is also, my hope and prayer is that you build with your significant other. A husband, if you are a man watching this, your wife, or if you're a Judy, your significant other. Okay, health is important, and especially in today's time. Health is important, especially in today's time. Health, 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 especially um, we all just went through the pandemic. So I want you all to continue to practice your self-care, right? And taking good food, listening to good music, Taking time to go outside and get that vitamin C, you know what I mean? You want to get that vitamin C. Even if you take a scroll, you, even if you just walk. Um, sometimes it's good to exercise outside. Swim, you know, it's getting ready to be hot. Um, especially in Atlanta, you Atlantians, um, let's get outside, let's be outside. Um, um, yeah, self-care. And also, this right here is considered self-care. Taking a moment to rest and chilling. You know, relax. Okay? So the next one is Matcha Love, right? So be fitting. So let's light some health in your life. Okay, the next is love, love, love. I keep saying this. Matter of fact, we're going to say two affirmations. I am love. I am love. Right? And the second one, we are love. Okay? I want you to write that down somewhere. Tell somebody in your home, tell somebody you're close to, I am love. And we are love, you know, love, love, love. We're missing that, okay? We are missing love. And another one that's been on my spirit is consideration. People don't understand the significance of considering others, right? So, and then unconditional love is a whole nother level because you have to unconditionally love yourself first. So we want to promote love, right? Just love, just marinate on that love. Just marinate on that love. Just marinate on that love. Just love, love, love. Again, I am love. Write that down. Say it throughout the day. And we are love, right? We, we, everybody. Love thy neighbor, just love. Now, that doesn't mean be a doormat. <laughs> you know, we ain't talking about that. We just saying just general universal love, okay? So let's light some love in your life. I'm wearing Lily silk. I love silk. Silk to me is so elegant, it's so feminine. You know what I mean? 
People identify silk with luxury, and I get it. I get it. But it's so feminine. It's just so. Uh, I just love some silk, honey. I just love me some silk. But this is lovely silk. Okay, so next, I want to light a new candle in here. And I felt. It was about, I want I, I want people to understand why I really do this for therapeutic reasons. If you see me doing stuff on YouTube, typically it's for therapeutic. <laughs> it's for therapeutic reasons. When I first got on YouTube, I had a business called Social Work Wealth. And then I also did Leisure's Work Online. I've always just done business, mostly. Um, but my YouTube channel, it's like therapy for me. It's so much fun. You know, I get to do all kinds of sorts of things. But this particular candle, it states, let me share. Okay, so this candle is called Calming, Soothing, and Peaceful. Thought it would so be fitting. Calming, Soothing, and Peaceful. And it smells so good. It smells so good. I wish you all could smell this. It smells so good. Okay, so the next thing I want to do, ooh, I'm getting parched. Y'all know I love me some ginger. try the ginger out the ginger the little crystals oh. and then they also have a scripture on each of the little packages so good this is so good when I take my bubble baths tell y'all this is this is what's it this is it this comparable to liquor <laughs> okay so lately I have been enjoying some fruit today I wanted to add a little something a little different so I added some oranges so I have some strawberries and oranges. So as I'm reading, you know, sister can also eat some fruit. <laughs> okay, so I know y'all are probably like, finally she changed from the avocado. Now I had some avocado. I had some avocado basalt. Mm. I haven't used it all. I said, let me save some of this. So now we're gonna use Chill Out Lavender and Lemon Bath Salts. And I got this from Marshalls for just $4.50, okay? I'm hooked to y'all. I'm hooked to y'all. Okay, I, I do affordable things. I, you know, I can go to Neiman Marcus and I can get a pair of Manolos. I can go to Neiman Marcus and get um, a Zimmerman. I can go to Neiman Marcus. I get it. But what y'all don't know is I also can go to Goodwill. Oh, yes. A Sister Frequent Goodwill. First of all, they put people to work. Okay, love that. So, yes. Um, just four dollars and fifty cent. Yeah, I can go into good. I can go into Goodwill. Um, and as I was saying, I absolutely love Goodwill because they put people to work. They give an opportunities. Um, things are affordable, and you'll be amazed at what you can find. And so you have to be patient when you go into Goodwill. You might not walk right in there and get things, but um, it's definitely a treasure hunt. And it's so worth it. And it's like therapy for me. But, um, $4.50. And it doesn't have any fragrance in it, so it works for me. So let me begin to run the water. And then finally, I'll put the roses. Oh, I forgot. So my second 20 minutes in the tub, in the bathtub, I'll keep reading. Tyler Perry's Medea, Uninhibited Commentaries on Love and Life. Let me begin running the water and put some of this nice bath salt in it.
Okay, so don't forget the first 20 minutes. It's about thanking God and also asking for forgiveness for anything that you've done that's not pleasing as I said. And then the second is about reading or learning. You can listen to your affirmations, whatever you feel that's befitting for you. And then the third is about visualizing. So of course you all know about to try one of these strawberries. They have been so good lately. Mm. And they are. Mm. Okay. They are. Okay, and so it is my hope and prayer that these spa days, these spa Mondays have been an asset. Or is it just have you critically thinking? It is my hope and prayer that you see the posit the positivity in what I'm doing. Um, the motivation, the um, getting up and, and you deserve to, you know, have peace in your life. But well, anyway, I'm going to enjoy my hour and then we're going to go to the kitchen and cook some French toast. Okay? All right. Okay, so I'm about to put the brown sugar in. Okay, I'm gonna put some cinnamon in. Next, we're gonna zest an orange.
Okay, I'm about to sit down. My French toes turned out amazing as usual. And let's take it to the dining table. Okay, I'm about to sit down and continue enjoying my bubble bath Monday. So after this, of course, back to work. Yes, yes. Look at that. Hmm. Looking good. Oh, and look at my arrangement I did. Isn't it beautiful? I did this. Go check out the video. Well, actually, I don't think this video has been posted yet, so I take that back, but it's coming. But anyway, let me enjoy my breakfast. Yes, yes, yes. And um, I look forward to our next bubble bath, which is next Monday. My name is Makeeba Williams, coming out of Atlanta. Please do not forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And it is my hope and prayer that your Bubba Bath Monday was just as amazing as mine.